Hey, Monteric, it's Trey Biddy. Uh, I had a question for you first. I was just curious, during the time away, what were you able to do as far as workouts and, and I guess doing the things that you needed to do to come back in shape? Uh, what were some of your goals? And, and then since you've been here, uh, what have you been focused on to improve on next year? Well, um, during my time being out, you know, um, I had surgery in January and um, I had um, I had to do rehab, you know, during that time. So I wasn't going to be able to do the spring. So um, I was just working on my own and just doing rehab throughout the day. And my goal for the team is to be more vocal as a leader. You know, um, coming in my freshman and sophomore year, um, I didn't play that much and I wasn't being, I mean, I wasn't being vocal. So um, my goal is to be more vocal and being more more involved. With what, my team. Was it? what was that injury? Uh, uh, sports hernia. Sports hernia. Okay. And Rakeem, uh, coach had mentioned that you he wanted you to get better uh, to improve your draft status uh, as a pass blocker and as a receiver. Uh, how how has that been coming along? And what are some of the things that you've done to to improve in that area? Uh, really this summer, I mean, really like over this little, you know, virus, I just like in Houston, I, I go to like wire receiver workouts and stuff like that and just catch the ball with them and then pass block. And I just been trying to get stronger, really, you know what I mean? In the weight room. So just getting big upper body. Thanks guys. Tom. Hey guys, this question is for both of you. Uh, what insight can you give us into what the strength and conditioning and the agility stuff you guys are going through, what it's like, who's, who's rising up as leaders and just what the, what the spirit of those workouts are like? I can say for me, um, everybody's been working at tell you know, um, we've been listening to coach Walker and everything, you know, listening, um, going by him and, um, everybody been working at tell you uh, the guys that emerged to me was um, Greg Books and um, Jerry Jacobs. You know, those guys have been stepping up lately, you know, into leadership roles and um, improving their role. Yeah, Rakeem, if you could address that as well, please. Okay. Uh, I mean, really, there's a lot of guys coming together, you know what I mean? Just a lot of teams not working out during this time, and we wanted the teams that, you know, believing we're going to have a season and we're going to get it on. I mean, there's a ton of guys been stepping up. Uh, John Stephen Jones, D.D. Edwards, uh, Simeon Blair. I mean, guys like that just been, you know, at it every day steady. You know what I mean? So, you know, those guys, I look at those guys. Those guys push me to go harder. So, Okay, those, and my final question yeah. is also for both of you. you. You guys are both in an age group that's young and healthy and vibrant. How difficult has COVID been for you guys at staying away from people, social distancing? How how well have you done it? We done it very well. You know, um, we listen to Coach Pittman and what he has to say, you know, social distance um, every day, you know, making sure we have our mask on and staying away from a, a large group of people. You know, it spreads quickly. So we just find what Coach Pittman says. Yeah, and I mean, keeping your hands clean and, and your mask on really just, you know, being clean. So, I mean, a lot, like – the workouts, I mean, we wear a mask in there. I mean, you know, six feet apart. I mean, we, we get it in, you know what I mean? Thanks, guys. Let's see, Nikki. Hey, Monteric. How do you feel about what your role is going to be? You mentioned Greg Brooks and, and Jerry Jacobs. Um, like, where do you see yourself fitting? Do you think you'll hold down that spot at corner like last season? <laughs> Of course, that's that's always my mindset, you know. Um, my mindset is to dominate and um, handle my position, you know, making sure I do what I have to do, you know. So, yeah. And, um, Rakeem, just how do you feel physically? Um, how do you feel like you did achieving the goals that you set for yourself when you were back at home? Say that again? How do you feel physically and how do you feel like you achieved the goals that you set for yourself when you were back home? I feel, honestly, this is probably the best I've ever felt. You know what I mean? This is, honestly, this corona time is is is, is good for me. You know what I mean? Because uh, I never had a really an off season to really, like, work out and stuff like that. So I've been having time really to just work on my body and get myself healthy for the season because it's my last one. Thanks, y'all. Bob? 
Um, hey, am, am I unmuted this time? We hear you, Bob, loud and clear. <laughs> hey, hey Rakeem, I was thinking about this, you know, I know you didn't play at A&M, but you were there with the staff, you had a JUCO staff, this is your mm -hmm. second Arkansas staff, so four staffs in five years, but you seem like you're rolling with the punches pretty well. What's that been like, and how do you think that's helped mature you? Just, have, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's... I thought about that actually the other day. I mean, it help out. It helps out a lot because, uh, I mean, I've learned a lot from Sumlin. I've learned a lot from just Coach Brown. I mean, Pittman, he's already been here. Even Chad Morris, you know what I mean? Just from that standpoint. I mean, I've just – I've learned a lot in every single category. So, it's been a struggle, but it's also been a blessing on top of it because, you know, you learn from what each coach got to offer and what, you know, what he's about, you know what I mean? And for Montero, you've obviously played a lot of great running backs in the SEC. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know you don't tackle Rakeem in practice, at least I hope you don't do anything to hurt him. But um, what do you think about him? Where does he fit in the, the group of running backs in this conference? What kind of season are you expecting from, from Rakeem? I mean, it's, I'm expecting an incredible season. You know, um, Rakeem the best running back in the conference to me. So I'm expecting great things for him. Well, what about his game impresses you? His speed, his speed, you know, Rakeem is fast. A lot of people don't really think Rakeem's that fast, but Rakeem's very fast and it'll surprise you and it'll sneak up on you. I think he's fast. So anyway, but thanks, thanks guys. Yeah. First day back, Bob, you and Rakeem, we're going to line it up 40 yards. Just give me a 10 minute head start. <laughs> you might win that one. <laughs> Mike, uh, this is for both of you guys. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, these stories started breaking on ESPN and other places about, you know, 22 players at Clemson tested positive. I think there was almost a third of LSU's teams that one team was almost was they said was quarantined because they'd been out to these bars on some Dixon Street type place in Baton Rouge. Did did you guys know about all that, and did it have an impact on you? Kind of sobering thing where you go, whoa, you know, we got to be careful. I mean, not really, because I've talked to a couple of players, I mean, like at Alabama, because Waddle's from Houston, you know what I mean? So I've talked to players like that. I mean, they're not at the school, but I mean, I, I think it's just, you know, I don't know. I think that's just crazy. It's that that many people has a coronavirus, you know what I mean? Some Something's not right, because, I mean, obviously we're doing something right over here, you know. It, it kind of surprised me, you know. Um, you know, just we just follow what Coach Pittman said. Because, you know, we, um, you like, you like, you really see it on social media. So we kind of knew about it already. So we just adjusted to that and like did what they wasn't doing, you know, following the rules, making sure we doing what we supposed to do. And this is kind of a version of the same question, which is there are people that, that basically say you can't, no matter what you say to a 20 year old football player, you can't really get through to them that they got to just stay in their room. They've got to stay away from people that it's unrealistic to expect that. So no matter what you interact with, with coach Pittman and what he says, there's going to come that time when you're, he's not around and you're making a decision. So how hard is it on each of you to really live up to these, these kind of guidelines and self police yourself? It's, it's not hard at all. I mean, like Coach Pittman said, if you want a season, then you're going to abide by those rules and follow those rules. So, I mean, if you want to have a season, so uh, uh, we follow the rules, you know. And I mean, also, if you want to live, you know what I mean, for your own good, you know what I mean? So that would, you know, that would help out a lot just staying inside. And I mean, I didn't got in the games now. I didn't bought a whole Xbox. So, so it's a lot different. And then I just had a quick one for Rakeem. Uh, when you were back home, you were working out with Justin Allen. How did you two meet? And exactly how did that time help get you ready for voluntary workouts and stuff? Uh, really? So I've been knowing Justin Allen for a long time. You know what I mean? Like even before a and m And I, we've just been in contact through social media. And, you know, one day we finally met because I think he was best friends with a guy that was on last year until a long time ago. One of those guys. So... And then once I got, ever since I got back in Houston, I've just been training with them and working on different stuff every day. So I knew, I, I know I, like I needed to get in shape. So I was like, okay, let me come back in shape and be ready. So. Good. Thank you.
Nate? Yeah, um, Montero, as far as, as last year's defense, I mean, your two most terrible players were a game and two to, and they're gone. How are you going to be a better defense without those guys and, and people replacing them? Well, you know, we got a lot of freshmen coming in. You know, um, thanks to um, Coach Pittman um, and his uh, and his staff for recruiting a great um, class. You know, we got freshmen in um, that got a chance to play early. You know, we got um, they get um, get a chance to play in those big roles. So, um, I'm I'm ready to see those freshmen come out. And uh, Rakeem, the question I have for, <clears throat> for you is: is the offensive line that Sam talked about? Do you really notice a difference? in their size and, and anybody in particular, you mentioned Cunningham, anybody else that stood out as far as the offensive line? Uh, those, like I say, those are my guys up front. So I've been, I've been here, what, for two years? I mean, it switches every year, I mean, so, I mean, this year, I mean, this is probably, you know, the best they've ever looked and look in shape and they've communicated. We got workouts, They're, the whole group's together game plan, you know what I mean? So as a running back, when you see something like that, you're like, you know, you can't do nothing but smile because you know what's going to happen during the season. So those guys are in shape. I'm very proud of them. That's probably the most impressive group right now. Anyone individual stood out to you at all? That, that and then, uh, Myron, I say them in the whole line. I mean, the whole line and the DBs have been, you know, hardworking groups. Thanks. Ty? Yeah, guys, just looking back in this past couple seasons, when you look ahead to this year, why are you guys confident in the first year under Sam Pittman in, in 2020 that you guys can get this thing going back on track? I mean, as, as, for as, both you, guys. Look at, as you look at Coach Pittman's record, I mean, it speaks for itself. You know, coming off two two and ten seasons, you know, a lot of people don't expect a lot from us. So, we coming in with the mentality that we got a chip on our shoulder and we ready to dominate every game. And I mean, he was at Georgia, so he he knows what winning's like. You know what I mean? So, he I you know I, that's why I came back. I trusted in him, and I trusted in the guys on the team already that you know we could be because I obviously I, a guy like me I, I know who we got on the team and. Obviously, some outsiders don't know what we have, but you know, people are gonna see Pittman. Pittman's the guy. And Rakeem, with you, with with Kendall as the new offensive coordinator, have you talked to any Baylor, or Florida, Atlantic, or Houston running backs about how he used them in his system? Uh, no, not really. But I've, I've talked to Cam Akins a long time ago, and just really to see how you know Kendall Browse is. But I've I've known him in high school. So we've I've communicated with him a couple of times, and I've I, his offense is you know it's a real high tempo offense. So you know you got to be in shape to run it. So he that's also a great guy, and you know Jeff Trailer knows him too. So he you know talks well about him. So Kendall you know is a good great guy. Great shot. Uh, this is for both guys. What's been the motivation through this pandemic? And then this off season for you guys to keep moving forward and get ready for this season. To get over on every other team, basically. You know what I mean? Because, you know, obviously the teams you see right now are not together. And Arkansas, we're together. We basically got our whole team right now. And we're all training. So that, that that's motivating us to, to win. You know what I mean? Obviously, we haven't been winning. So we're, that's what we're trying to do. So we, we're going to need everybody. Like Rakeem said, you know, everybody's not working out. So we're just trying to um, be here every day. You know, um, workouts are voluntary, but we treat it like it's mandatory. So we're here every day, and we're just trying to get the edge on everybody else. And then also for you, Rakeem, you just mentioned Jeff Trailer just a little bit ago. How much do you and he interact, and, and what's it like now with him down at, obviously, San Antonio UTSA, and, and you're here in Fayetteville? Oh, man, it's, you know, like I told him I was going to come see him, you know, but I talked to him probably twice, twice, twice a month, I think. So, I mean, it's 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 good talks every time we talk, you know what I mean? So. We right, got five, six minutes left here. Uh, Trey Biddy, got a couple more, you said? 
Yeah, I got a couple more. This is for both guys real quick. Uh, a lot of times when there's a coaching change, the new coach that comes in, they will look for somebody that's drastically different than the last coach. And I was wondering if there's anything that Sam Pittman brings to the table that maybe is that stands out as different, whether it's culturally or uh, the way he communicates with you guys or maybe something that was missing before that he's brought in. I was wondering if you guys could could comment on 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 that. Yeah, honestly, Pittman's uh, obviously, as everyone knows, he's a straight up dude. He's gonna give it to you like it is. So I mean, coming in, I I knew he was a real dude. You know, not most coaches gonna give it to you. You know, straight on the plate, they're gonna sugarcoat everything. But Pittman's gonna set you straight. He's gonna tell you, and you're gonna get it done. And if you don't, you're gonna have consequence. You know what I mean? Kind of old school type of coach. So I I really like it. Yeah, um, Coach Pittman is a straight-up guy. Like, um, during the coaching change, you know, when we were looking for a coach and we found out Coach Pittman was going to be our coach, it, was, it wasn't it was no mind of me transferring, you know. I knew I was going to stay because Coach Pittman is a great guy and he was here previously. So, Coach Pittman is a great guy. He's straight up. And, Monteric, I was wondering if you could maybe tell us a little bit about how the secondary is looking. Like, who's working at nickel? Is Greg Brooks still going to be a nickel? Is Jalen Catalan going to be? free safety, you know, who's working behind you, that kind of stuff when you guys just work out or, or any depth chart that you might have in your head? Uh, so far, I don't know the depth chart, but I can say um, we got guys that will step up, you know, like Nick Turner, um, Jerry Jacobs, you know, Malik Chavis, Ladarius Bishop, you know, but I don't really know the depth chart right now, but oh, look out for those guys, those guys working hard too. So is anybody specifically working at Nickel or expected to be there? Maybe. Uh, Greg Brooks, Jerry Jacobs. Uh, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Yes, sir. Uh, Tom, you want to wrap us up here? A couple questions? You're on mute, Tom. I do have one more question. Uh, guys, there's a lot of social change in the air, and Sam Pittman went down to the protest um, in Fayetteville. And I just wonder what you guys think of how he stands um, in terms of being with you guys and just what he's meant to you guys from in that manner. You can say that again. Um, Coach Pittman's stance, you know, his, there's a lot of political um, and social stuff going on and just how he, he went down to that march and just what he stands for, you know, what you think of him in that regard. Honestly, I, you know, as a head coach, I wouldn't know what to do, but I, I thought he was probably one of the best coaches that handled it well. He, he, you know what I mean? He represented his team well, you know what I mean? During that time. So I was, during the time, I, I was very proud of Pittman. You know what I mean? He reached out to a couple of players and you know what I mean? So I, that, 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 you know, that's big. Yeah, like he just handled the situation well, for what I think, you know. So. I'm done. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kyle. Yes, sir. All right. Appreciate y'all. Uh, we've got to get Rakeem and Buster to a team meeting. So uh, good to see everybody. I'm going to be reaching out to a few of y'all, uh, trying to figure out how we're going to operate moving forward here over the next month and into the season, just to, to try to figure out how we can best serve y'all and getting your, uh, getting your work done and, and where, where we can assist you. So uh, if you need anything, let me know. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks.